Welcome to the best of first person episodes from Phantoms and Monsters. Please like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you'll be notified of all future uploads. Illinois Tall Pale White Humanoid We live in Northern Illinois, near Rockford. Our backyard is pretty long and connects to an alleyway, and all the way at the back we have two poles that used to be used for hanging clothes out to dry. They're probably about six and a half feet tall. Connected to my house in the yard is a porch. It's basically a room with two of the walls taken out and replaced with wire mesh. We live in a two-bedroom house with my cousin, her son, my mom, and my grandfather. My mom and I used to share our room until my cousin got pregnant, so she gave up our room so she wouldn't be sleeping on an uncomfortable couch. For a while my mom and I slept in the living room, her on the couch and me on an air mattress. Up until two years ago, my mom reverted a room in our basement into a bedroom for me, so I could get some privacy for myself. My mom still sleeps in the living room on the couch, so she doesn't have any privacy, except for back porch. So she pretty much just sits out there all day. It was last year in late summer or early fall. My mom was sitting on the porch, as she usually does, and she looks out into the backyard and sees something standing in the alley, right behind our fence. It was pretty dark out so she couldn't make out exactly what it looked like, but she said it had a human figure, was completely white, about the size of the poles we have in the yard. She told me that it hopped the fence with no problem and started sprinting at her, like if it were running a marathon or something. It then got a couple feet away from the porch window, and then just disappeared. She said she was so scared that she was completely frozen that entire time. She didn't move her body for a good 20 seconds because she was scared that if it saw her move it was going to come back. She just kept moving her eyes to get them to adjust to the dark, so she could see if there was anything still outside. To come outside to the porch, you need to walk through the kitchen, and that's where I was. I was sitting at the kitchen table when she bursts through the door, and runs to the sink to get a knife. So now I'm panicking because I thought there was a murder outside or something, and then she tells me what happened. We both stayed there for a good hour just looking out the kitchen window to see if that thing was still there. I haven't talked to her about that at all since then, until now. MP. Do people shock by pale white encounter? I'll be honest, I almost never believe anyone's story about seeing mythical creatures or monsters, and wouldn't believe this story if I told myself it from another perspective. However the only reason I think I actually did see something was because my friend saw the same thing and verified my eyes weren't just playing tricks on me. We were driving home from a friend's, she was the driver I was passenger, around 1.30 am. Going around 35 miles per hour I see a figure standing completely still on the side of the road just looking across the road not moving. What it looked like. Thin and relatively tall, maybe 6 to 6 and a half feet tall. Pale skin. Hunched over slightly dark black pits for eyes. No mouth, or if there was one very small and not noticeable. Stringy long hair like Gollum. Wearing clothes like a tattered coat or hoodie thing. And here's a really strange feature, its legs were jointed backwards, like a cricket, but it was standing straight up. Imagine your own leg slightly bent, but the bend is reversed. Anyone seen anything like this or have an idea of what it is? This really freaked me out because I saw it and immediately turned to my friend the driver, and she had a look of pure shock and fear also, and at that moment we both realized we saw it. We were so scared we sped up and didn't look back. Now I wish we looked back to see what it was. RB. Californian recalls observing pale white as a child. I had an experience as a child and I'll never forget every detail of that day. Little backstory, at the time we lived with my grandmother in the high desert of California. She had a dance studio built on her property, so the house was in the center of the land, with a large building off to the right. I was about seven and was sitting on the front porch with my dogs. Puppy was blind, but definitely took our dog seriously, he was always the first to signal danger. Suddenly his hackles went up and he started growling towards the dance studio. There was this hole that it appeared that went under the studio. All attempts to fill it in had been met with it reappearing the next morning. So as the puppy is growling, Raja, a bull mastiff, stood up and put her body between me and the stairs path to the studio. Suddenly this pale creature with limbs weighed along comes crawling out of the hole. 
I just stood there and stared. At first it didn't see me, and I was too scared to try to make it to the door. Then it spotted me, and stood up and it just kept standing up. It was unnaturally tall. We stared at each other for what felt like forever. I then screamed, ran for the door and flew it open. I looked one last time, and it had thrown itself on all fours and was running off the property to the fields across the street. This was near sunset, and that was the only time I ever saw it. I stopped going outside alone after that. Also this was all the way back 1997. DB. Tall pale humanoids occupy Canadian farm. This incident occurred in May 2015 in Dufferin County in Ontario, Canada. A friend of mine recently recounted this strange story to me. This friend owns a few hundred acres of land which he rents to farmers to grow crops. As you can imagine the area is rather quiet, not too many houses or traffic around these back roads. His house was under renovation at the time, so he was staying in a trailer around the back of his property. Nothing but potato field with an old barn poking out from the fields. One night, he said around 1 a.m. he was woken up to his dogs going nuts, scratching at the trailer door. When he went to let them out he was surprised to see bright yellow lights behind and inside the nearby barn. Thinking it was trespassers he let his dogs loose and went to grab his rifle. He said as he was loading it he heard his dogs go from barking to yelping and whining. They came barreling back into the trailer and proceeded to hide under the table. Thinking these people heard his dogs he stepped out of the trailer and fired five rounds into the air and began yelling as he readied another magazine. He got a response when the lights around the barn grew incredibly bright. He admits that at that point he was pretty freaked out. He said that he stood there for a bit staring at the lights when he noticed two beings casually walking across the field towards the barn. Apparently when he saw them he was hit with a mixture of confusion and fear. He describes them as humanoid, pale white, tall and thin. Having very small heads in comparison to their bodies, he also notes that they must have been six and a half foot, with most of that height being leg length. He stated that they moved very strangely. Their upper body seemed stiff and locked, but their legs moved very fluidly, almost bringing their knees to their chest. Understandably fear took over him, he took aim and fired three rounds at the beings, which just made them completely stop moving. Then he noticed a third one to his left very close, but walking away from his trailer. He turned around, went back inside and went for his handguns when the light outside vanished. He sat inside his trailer with silent dogs until morning. He didn't check out the barn until two days later. He found nothing strange there. No burn marks, no holes, all was normal. When checking the fields he also found absolutely nothing. He told me that he was freaked out for a while afterwards, but nothing strange has ever happened on his property since then. He also likes to add that not too far from his property is a large piece of military land in the woods. It's completely fenced off with barbed wire and sports nothing but vents sticking out of the ground inside it. Apparently it's a site used for listening to and broadcasting messages into space. So that's the story, I was curious to find out what other people think this might have been. And I know, I didn't tell it too well. If there are any questions, I'll be sure to ask him and get back to you. SD. Tall pale humanoid in the backyard. I live in North Carolina, Durham specifically. My family lives in a standard two-story house in the middle of a run-of-the-mill neighborhood, lots of intersecting roads etc. On the night of question, about two nights ago, my family was going to visit a relative who had given birth recently in Greensboro, so I had the house to myself. I was getting home at around 8 to 9 p.m. and decided to bring my dog in. She stays outside in the kennel for the day until we bring her in for the night. Our house has a garage attached to the left of it, and the garage has a back door that leads into the backyard. Her kennel is just to your right as you exit the door. With a 4 to 5 feet clearance or path in between it and the garage, there is also a bed of rock just up against the house, this will be important. She had recently been taken to the vet for her distressed behavior, which is why I had to stay home to be with her. 
The evening went fine. I watched a movie to pass the time. I then decided to take her out to use the bathroom before being put up for the night, around 12 to 1. I took her out the back garage door with her long leash, I was wearing socks and didn't feel like getting them soaked. She usually does her business in that little clearing between the kennel and garage, so I let her walk down through it. Our garage has a single light on the back wall, not LED or really bright, so I can see her somewhat well while she does it. She's facing me when suddenly her backside lifts almost one or two feet into the air. Paranormal or not I freaking screamed at this. I assumed some wild dog or something had tried to drag her. She runs back to me and I hear rustling among the rocks, and this figure stops right as it enters visible view in the light. I've never seen anything like it in my life. It was tall. I'm six foot two, and I had to look slightly up to see where I thought its head was. It was pale but not white or gray, just normal pale flesh color, like someone who spends a week or two indoors. It was lanky, not really anorexic or anything but definitely disproportionate. It looked at me for a good one to two seconds before it backtracked in the quickest manner I could never replicate. As soon as it went I booked it back inside. I was torn about calling the police if neighbors who had heard my scream hadn't. Behold almost half an hour later the police arrive in my driveway, I told them that I had seen a man in the backyard, leaving out the whole tall demon stuff going on. I have been contemplating whether it was some creature or some NBA bound nude meth head. Once again, I don't count myself as a believer in the Bigfoot or Mothman, but I really don't know what the hell happened. I'm most definitely not taking the dog out alone anytime soon. What the hell is was thing? Why was it in a suburban neighborhood? Should I bother telling my family when they get back? T.S. This is Lon Strickler. If you like this program, it would help us if you would give it a thumbs up. Then subscribe and click the bell icon so you get notification when we upload new first-person encounters. We have many more to come very soon. And by the way, if you have a suggestion or an experience of your own, please leave a comment.